Hello everybody and welcome back to M&J Games. I am Michael and today we are looking at a PC park and it was created by Mr. E Gaming, or at least that's the creator's YouTube channel's name. So the link to his YouTube channel is in the description below. And this park was actually created on um, PC. So I thank Mr. E for pre-recording this footage. But the, the title of the park is called the Mega Park Coaster City Complete. So the, the park's called Coaster City. It's made up of mostly coasters, which that's right up my alley because y'all know that's what I kind of gravitate towards. Um, but the description says, Welcome to Coaster City. This park is a fantasy park that has some realistic elements and some I wanted there to be um, the separation from reality and fantasy, hence why there's 50 million red cars. This project is now complete. So... Looking at some of the cinematics here, I mean this this looks awesome. Um, a lot of coasters, which is nice. There is, um, you know, definitely some um, some terraforming done, which is nice. So we can see here the entrance. Now maybe the only thing I would suggest that you could do on kind of the entrance area is placing whether you use just kind of like a, the thick wooden beam or the spook central window sills or even the decorative concrete course kind of to create a, a border between where you have the cement and then where you have that that temple piece um, temple wall piece for the guests to walk on that's my one suggestion there but you can kind of see the views from the parking lot are awesome like seeing that I couldn't tell if that was an RMC up there on that hill over there and then you got the what well, looks like an invert here but it looks like maybe an old school B&M maybe we'll see but you got a little restroom there, so we got some tickets. So Coaster City with some custom lettering. And now since this is on PC, I don't know how much TMTK or if any um, um, this creator uses, and his name's Greg, so that Greg uses. Um, so I'm really really excited to see. But I like how right when you enter, it's it's a little bit wooded, um, which is nice. So the first coaster that we come to is Fusion. And I believe there are 12 coasters. I could be wrong about that number um, because I haven't watched the footage before now because I wanted everything to be organic and stuff like that. Um, but I think there's potentially like 12 coasters in this park, which is awesome. And so now we can see is here we are at Fusion and I will, as we look at the stats there, everything's all green. G-forces, uh, maybe vertical G-forces are just a little bit high, but we know Planko is obviously far from perfect with that. So I will talk to you after the coaster. So that was Fusion, and there's really not much to say about that because it's there's really a, that's really a one-trick pony. I was honestly not expecting that coaster type right there, but I guess it makes sense for where it was located. But I think it was good. I think the and changing the coloring up to kind of be a blue instead of the traditional kind of red that it comes with, I think was nice. That's a nice little food stand back there, and then you got the fencing going along. So that's one thing that I have noticed too, kind of seeing some of your builds. Um, as you build more, you, you've you been improving on the little details kind of around. Um, and so this is an awesome walkway right here, how you're walking underneath the the wooden coaster. That is awesome. Was it? Gosh, I just missed the name. I think it was Mighty Oak, potentially. The only negative with flip cam is you're going through a lot of people. But it's... Flip cam is the best because you get this amazing guest view and perception and just amazing. So as we look at these stats, close to all green. G-forces look good, so the biggest drop is 83 feet, max speed of 59 miles per hour, and we'll chat after the coaster.
That was a fantastic coaster. I absolutely love that. And I think you did a good job with it because it feels like, since it's a true wooden coaster, it wasn't a newer style wooden coaster. It didn't have a lot of the quick airtime hills. Stuff was kind of drawn out. There were some parts that kind of had awkward banking or angles, but it was so smooth. And it seemed like it would be a coaster that was built like late 90s, early 2000s. Um, that was trying to like be a larger wooden scale or larger scale wooden coaster, but it was that was great, especially that first drop was so unique and different. And now we're all ready in the queue for the next one, so that's what's great about this park is it's just coaster after coaster after coaster, which is uh, my kind of theme park right there. Now that we're up here at the station, and now we're looking at the stats for the coaster max speed 47 miles per hour, biggest drop 19 feet. So I'm guessing this is going to be a launch coaster then, and I will talk to you after the coaster. So that was the coaster, and to be honest, I already forgot the name of it, um, but I, I think that was, it needed a little bit of smoothing, but also the elements were too tight, if that makes sense, because there were a couple moments where you launched the coaster and the turn was too tight to where it would, it would create some really strong vertical g-forces or lateral g-forces, um, and so now I think this one was called Batwing, potentially. Um, but yeah, so that one I, I think needed just a little bit more work compared to the first two we looked at. Um, but it's more just the, I know you're trying to fit it in a smaller space there, I'm guessing, but the there are some moments of the layout that needed to, the elements needed to be a little bit more prolonged. Um, but that's just my thoughts. And then now, looks like this is the flying coaster model. So if you look at these stats, the max speed of 60 miles per hour. Biggest drop, 102 feet, G-forces look great. So I will talk to you after the coaster. All right, that was a really, really good layout. The only part to me that kind of stood out being a little bit different was the end part, where it kind of had that inversion, where it went through at a pretty good pace, and then halfway through it kind of slowed down drastically. Um, but the I think my favorite part about that was the element where it looked like, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, because it's kind of hard to tell, but you basically look like you did a half loop, and then an Immelman, or it wouldn't necessarily be an implement. Basically, that that combination of two inversions into the break run there, um, or the mid course, was just awesome. I think that element was really cool, and that was a really good job with flying coaster because I remember seeing that from the park and seeing the lack of banking on the turn on the first drop. I was kind of interested to see how 
that actually looked when I knew what coaster type it was. And I think it worked well for being a flying coaster. And all the elements worked. And, yeah, I think I still like the wooden coaster the best at this point, but that's a close second. So, and then a little bit different station here. So, I like the glass window kind of going through. And this is the... Um, gosh, I'm forgetting the name of this coaster type now. I, mean, I know it's Premier Rides, but in real life. Um, so as we can see these stats, so we just drop 85 feet. The coloring gives me a little bit of half steel curtain vibe, <laughs> if that makes sense. That was a really great coaster, and I don't know if y'all noticed, but there was custom supporting done for that entire ride. That entire ride's custom supported, which is awesome. But my favorite part was, I believe it was an element like on Steel Curtain where, or it was either Steel Curtain or Max Force. I'm trying to remember that it has that really cool kind of combination of two inversions at the highest point on the ride. So that was really cool. So there we go. We're taking a quick bathroom break before we... Um, move on to the next area of the park so now we've got um, peregrine I think we'll go with it <laughs> we'll just roll with it um, yeah so far I think that last one we rode was probably my second favorite we've been on I think it was really good um, the top three are all really have re all been really good so far and so now ooh RMC love a good RMC the Steel Vengeance cars. So now, once again, look at stats. Um, so this looks on the smaller end of an RMC, which is fine. Um, G-Forces look really good. So maybe a family-style RMC, if there are no inversions, and the tallest hill is 72 feet, so maybe more on the family variety. But we will chat after the coaster. I definitely feel that if we were in an actual park that that would be marketed as a family style coaster especially since it goes around twice as you saw there um, but now this is uh, I'm not gonna, not even gonna pronounce that um, but it looked like we had like a little food area to the right there restrooms and so it seems like just from walking around this park um, that Greg has done a you know better job with his building style and stuff like that and um, what I mean by that is, because I know a lot of his parks is, like he's told me too, like he focuses so much on coasters and trying to get better with buildings, and I definitely feel like he's done that in this park. And I like the custom fencing there. I noticed that earlier too on, I believe it was the wooden coaster, and I forgot to mention it. Um, but it's just using what looks to be the haunted house pillars. Um, and so now we look at this one. Definitely a hyper, 206 foot drop, so it's on the lower end of the hypers though. Max speed is 79 miles per hour, G-forces look great, and hypers are some of my favorite types of coasters, so I'm super stoked for this coaster, and we'll chat afterwards.
right, so that was the hyper coaster, and yeah, I mean that's my favorite so far. I love hyper coasters. That's that's not a secret. Hypers, Gigas, RMC is my favorite types. So those three, um, or the RMC hybrid, I guess you'd say. I mean topper track, the RMC topper track ones are really great as well. Um, but yeah, no surprise, that's one of my favorites. It was such a long coaster that had to have two mid-course break roads. <laughs> um, so we got Storm Blazer right now, and it looks like it's probably a B&M invert, um, since we already had a flying coaster earlier. All right, here we are. We got the B&M invert, which I do love B&M inverts. They are pretty intense a lot of times, and... This is right in line with it, 99 feet, max speed of 55 miles per hour, so it's essentially a Batman clone, or not not necessarily in terms of layout, but just in terms of the height and the speed. G-forces look really good, and we'll chat after the coaster. So that was the B&M invert. Once again, you can see the custom, um, the custom railings there, which is nice. And I like that coaster. I think a couple elements have went through too quick, um, especially those barrel rolls because you don't. Now, Banshee's got barrel roll, and it is awesome. I want to see more of those. Um, you know, just like a barrel roll on a wing coaster and stuff. But they're always near the end of the layout to where you go pretty slow through those elements so you get hang time. Um, so I don't know when you're going pretty quick through the element how, if that would really be able to work properly with the forces and stuff um, and with how you're sitting. I could be totally off base on that. Um, but yeah, the layout was good. I think there were some cool elements and stuff like that. And I, I, I wish more B&M inverts had whether you call it a heartline roll or barrel, I guess it'd be barrel roll, but you can't heartline when you're sitting below the track. But now onto the next coaster. This one's another one that's right under 100 feet. Um, vertical G-forces look good, max speed 54 miles per hour, and it looks like a B&M floorless. So we'll chat afterwards.
so that was the B&M floorless coaster and I thought the layout was strong definitely very smooth and Greg's really good with making smooth coasters and stuff and I believe that that is all the coasters in the park um, as I'm looking at the time left on the video and so I was a little bit off on the 12 coasters I think we went on about eight but my favorite was definitely the hyper um, so we can see now we took another restroom break um, <laughs> And second favorite was the wooden coaster. Then I would probably put the B&M invert, then the B&M floorless, then the flying, then the RMC, um, and then the last two. So I think I've got all of them there. But you can kind of see some of the buildings kind of throughout the park as we are heading towards the exit here. And I want to take this time to thank you guys so much for watching and for your support. And make sure to go check out Greg's YouTube channel called Mr. E Gaming, as the link is in the description below, as well as the link to this park on the Steam Workshop if you play on PC and want to download it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.